Hello and welcome to the second video about Sony's DWR SO3D. Hands on! If you have not seen the first video of this series, click in the link on the description and have a look on facts and details about the SO3D receiver from Sony. Let's have a look how I power the SO3D with the 25 pin adapter. The two adapters Sony has, the DWA F01D and the DW01D, are only equipped with the 15 pin connector. So if you like to use the 25 pin adapter, then you need something like this. This is a very simple product from HL Audio in Berlin. DWA 30P25 is the name. Link will be in the description. And this has a high rose connector for power, can be between 6 and 18 volt, and then two XLRs for analog and digital output. Hardware setup is done. Now we have to do four major steps. Defining your main frequency block, choosing a frequency group, selecting two frequencies for channel one and channel two, and connecting your transmitters. Let's go. Here we have the receiver, and the first thing we do, we switch on receiver number one and receiver number two. And you see the main screen which shows you an overview about channel one and channel two, uh, the RF level, the TX connection and quality level. To understand how the menu structure works, it makes sense that you read the manual. Menu select is the main point and you have five main menus. One is the two channel overview, which is the system menu. Then you have RX1, TX1, RX2, TX2, and then you are back on the main screen. If you want to select the features of the system, then you go to the system menu and you go to the plus and minus button and you can scroll down and see the different points of the menu. Point number one is band block. This is the main band block for both channels. Press the set button for two seconds. It starts blinking and then with plus and minus you can change the feature. So in this case, because this is a low version, you can choose between 21, 29 and channel 30 to 38. Let's use in our case the channel 30 to 38. Press set button again and it is stored. Okay, press the menu button one times more and you are on RX number one and it shows you the main set of this receiver. It, it is using group 00, frequency number one of the sub band block we have chosen. If you like to change the sub band block, we go uh, and press the minus button one times to the first point of the sub menu and here again with Pressing the set button, you can change in the main block we have chosen one of the three sub blocks. I will leave this with TV channel 30, 32, that's 24 megahertz on the beginning of the main block. Press set again and job done. Going back uh, with the plus button to the highest point of the RX menu, we can now choose. A group and a frequency. How the group and frequency structure works is part of the video linked down in the description. In the end Sony has included a lot of pre-programmated groups which have the right channel spacing and I will choose here one of the groups whatever you like let's say D11 press set again and it's stored. Now we can use one of the frequencies of the group. I will leave it with the um, TV channel 30 frequency 2 which is 542-250 megahertz. Press set and job done. What you also see here is your noise level. It shows you the RF level on the antenna. So if this is very high on this frequency maybe you choose another one but we will see this and the next setup process where we do an automatic frequency scan and a free channel scan. Okay, ready for channel one. 
going to RX number two, the subband block is the same. Choosing the right group, which was group D11. And here, just for a start, I choose the frequency, the next frequency, which is available in this group, which is TV channel 30, frequency number five. Okay, we have set up the receiver for both channels, but the video is always too long, so connecting transmitters will be part of video number three. Thanks for watching.